ओम शांति दिस इज दि साकार मुरली ऑफ सेवेंटीन ऑफ ऑगस्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर एसेंस स्वीट चिल्ड्रन डू नॉट हैव लव फॉर पैरिसेबल बॉडीज बट हैव लव फॉर द इम्पैरिसेबल फादर एंड यू विल बिकम लिबरेटेड फ्रॉम क्राइंग Question: What is the unrighteous love, and what are its consequences? Answer: To have attachment to perishable bodies is to have unrighteous love. Those who have attachment to perishable things cry. There is crying because of body consciousness. In the golden age, all are soul conscious. and there is therefore no question of crying those who cry end up losing everything the imperishable children of the imperishable father now receive those teachings become so conscious and you will be liberated from crying om shanti all the you children know that souls are imperishable and that the father is also imperishable so whom should you love imperishable souls it is only imperishable ones that should be loved one should not love perishable bodies the whole world is perishable everything is perishable This body is also perishable, whereas the soul is imperishable. Love for a soul is imperishable. A soul never dies. This is said to be righteous. The father says, "You have become unrighteous." In fact, imperishable ones should have love for the imperishable one. You have love for perishable bodies, and this is why you end up crying. You don't have love for imperishable souls. Because of having love for the perishable, you have to cry. You now consider yourselves to be imperishable souls, and so there is no question of crying because you are soul conscious. So the father is now making you children soul conscious. by being body conscious you end up crying you cry over perishable bodies you understand that souls never die the father says consider yourself to be souls so you are imperishable souls imperishable children of the imperishable father you don't need to cry a soul leaves a body and goes and plays another part this is a play why do you have attachment to your body break your intellect yoga away from your body and all its relationships and consider yourself to be an imperishable soul souls never die it is also remembered those who cry lose out by becoming soul conscious you will become worthy so the father comes and makes you soul conscious from body conscious He says, "How is it that you have forgotten everything? You have had to cry for birth after birth. You are now being given teachings to become soul conscious once again. Then you will never cry. This is a world of tears, whereas that is a world of laughter. This is a world of sorrow, whereas that is a world of happiness." The father gives you teachings in a very nice way. The imperishable children of the imperishable father are receiving teachings. These people are body conscious and they give teachings while only looking at bodies. People cry when they remember a body. They even see that that body has been destroyed. And so what would be the benefit of remembering it? Would you remember ashes? the imperishable thing like its soul went and took another body you children know that those who perform good actions also receive good bodies 
some receive badly diseased bodies that too is according to their karma it isn't that if they have performed good actions they go up above no no one can go up above those who have performed good actions would be called good and they would receive a good birth but they still have to come down you know how we ascend Although some might become a mahatma but its great soul by performing good actions his degrees would still continue to decrease the father says even so they remember god and perform good actions and so i give them temporary happiness never the less they still have to come down the ladder perhaps they have a good name but people here can't even distinguish between good and bad actions those who have occult powers are given so much regard people go crazy chasing after them all of that is ignorance for instance someone makes donations and performs charity indirectly or builds a dharmsala or a hospital so he will surely receive the return of that in his next birth they also remember the father and even though they insult others they still take the name of god However, because of being ignorant, they don't know anything. They remember God and worship Rudra. They consider Rudra to be God. They create a sacrificial fire to Rudra. They worship Shiva or Rudra. The father says they worship me. But look at what they create and what they do all out, what they all do out of senselessness. There are as many gurus for human beings as there are human beings. When new leaves and branches emerge on a tree, they look so beautiful. Because of being sattva guni, they are praised. The father says this is a world of those who have love for perishable things. Some have so much love that it is as though they go crazy out of attachment. Even important businessmen go crazy out of attachment because women don't have this knowledge. When they become widows, they cry so much in remembrance of those perishable bodies. You now consider yourselves to be souls, and you look at others as souls, and so there isn't the slightest sorrow. A study is said to be a source of income. There is also an aim and objective in study. However, that is for one birth. They receive a salary from the government. They study and then do business. only then do they receive money here this is something new how do you fill your aprons with the imperishable jewels of this knowledge the soul understands that baba is giving us the imperishable treasure of this knowledge god is teaching you and so he will surely make you into gods and goddesses however it is in fact wrong to consider lakshmi and narayan to be a god and goddesses Your children now know that when we become body conscious, our intellects become so degraded that it is as though our intellects become like animal intellects. They take care of animals so well. The service of human beings is nothing at all. Race horses are looked after so well. Look at the condition of people here. They look after dogs with so much love. They even let them lick them. the evil light animals go to sleep with them look what the condition of the world has become this business does not exist there in the golden age so the father says children maya ravan has made you unright years this is the unright years kingdom people are unright years and so the whole world becomes unright years look how much different there is between the righteous world and this unright years world Look at the condition of the Iron Age. I am establishing heaven, and so Maya also shows you her heaven. She tempts you. There is so much artificial wealth. They believe that they are sitting in heaven here. There aren't such tall buildings of a hundred stories in heaven. Look how they decorate the buildings. There aren't even two-story buildings there. There are very few people there. What would you do with so much land? Here, people fight and quarrel so much over land. There, all the land belongs to you. There is the difference of day and night. Those are worldly fathers, and this one is the bad-looking father. 
What does the Parlaki father not give you children? You have been performing devotion for half a cycle. The father tells you clearly, you don't receive liberation by doing that. That is, you cannot meet me through that. You meet me in the land of liberation. I reside in the land of liberation and you too reside in the land of liberation. You don't go to heaven from there. I am not there in heaven. This too is in the drama. It will then repeat identically. You will then forget this knowledge. It will disappear. How can there be this knowledge of the Gita until the confluence age comes? All the scriptures etc. that exist are scriptures of the path of devotion. You are now listening to this knowledge. I am the seed, the ocean of knowledge. I don't allow you to do anything. Not even to fall at my feet. Whose feet would you fall at? Sir Baba doesn't have feet. That would be falling at the feet of Brahma. I am your slave. He is said to be incorporeal and egoless. However, it is only when he comes here to act that he is said to be egoless. The Father gives you a lot of this knowledge. This is the donation of the imperishable rules of knowledge. It is then up to you as to how much you take. Continue to take the imperishable jewels of knowledge and then donate them to others. It is said of the jewels, each jewel is worth hundreds of thousands. It is only the one father who gives you multi millions at every step. You have to pay a lot of attention to doing service. Your steps are of the pilgrimage of remembrance. You become immortal through that. There, there is no fear of dying. You share a body and take another. You have heard the story of the king who conquered attachment. The father sits here and explains to you, the father is now making you become like that. This refers to the present time. People celebrate the Acha Bandhan festival. That is a symbol of what time? When did God say become pure? What do people know of when the old world exists and when the new world exists? No one knows that. They definitely say that it is now the iron age. They say that it was the golden age but that it is not dead now. They also believe in rebirth. They speak of 8.4 million births and so that definitely means rebirth. Everyone remembers the incorporeal father. He is the father of all souls. He alone comes and explains to you. There are many physical fathers. Even animals are fathers of their children. You will not say of that one that he is the father of animals. In the golden age there is no ravis. As are human beings, so is their furniture. There, even birds etc. are first class and beautiful. Everything there is very good. The food there is so sweet and large. Where does all of that go? The sweetness is removed and there is bitterness instead. When you become third class, everything else also becomes third class. The golden age is first class and so everything you receive there is first class. In the iron age, everything is third class. Everything goes through the stages of Sato, Rajo and Tamo. There is no pleasure here. Souls are Tamo Pradhan and so the bodies too are Tamo Pradhan. You children now have this knowledge. There is the difference of day and night between that time and the present. The father is making you so elevated. The more you remember him, the more you will receive both health and wealth. What else do you need? If you don't have either of the two, there won't be happiness. For instance, if you have health but no wealth, of what use is that? It is remembered if you have money, go and tour around. Children understand that Bharat was the golden sparrow. Where is the golden gold now? Gold, silver and copper have gold and now there is nothing but paper. Where would you get money from if the paper were to flow away in the water? Gold is very heavy. It would remain where it is. Even fire cannot burn gold. So here everything causes sorrow. None of these things exist there. There is limitless sorrow here at this time. The father comes when there is limitless sorrow. Tomorrow there will be limitless happiness. Baba comes and teaches you every cycle. This is not anything new. 
you should remain happy you have nothing but happiness this is the stage of final period ask the hopes and gopis about super senses joy at the end you will understand everything very well only the father tells you what real peace is you claim the inheritance of peace from the father everyone remembers him the father is the ocean of peace the father explains who can go to him such and such a religion comes at such and such a time they cannot go to heaven many sages and holy men have now emerged so they are praised <coughs> since they are pure they will definitely be praised they have just newly come down old ones cannot be praised as much they have experienced happiness and become tamopradhan so many different types of gurus continue to emerge no one knows this unlimited tree the father explains there is as much expansion of devotion as the spread of a tree whereas this knowledge the seed is so small devotion takes half a cycle whereas this knowledge is just for this final birth you receive this knowledge and become the masters for half a cycle devotion ends and it becomes the day you are now becoming cheerful for all time this is called the imperishable lottery from god you have to make effort for this there is so much difference between this godly lottery and the devil's lottery acha to the sweetest beloved long lost and now found children love remembrance and good morning from the mother the father bab dada the spiritual father say namaste to you spiritual children and the spiritual children say namaste to the spiritual father essence for dharma number 1 you are multi millions in every step of remembrance it is by doing this that you attain an immortal status Don't be imperishable jewels of this knowledge that you receive from the Father. Second, be soul conscious and experience limitless happiness. Remove your attachment from bodies and remain constantly cheerful. Become a conqueror of attachment. Blessing may be a special soul and constantly stay in spiritual pleasure by considering every moment to be your final moment. the confluence age is the age to stay in spiritual pleasure and so you must continue to experience spiritual pleasure at every moment never become confused about any situation or any test because this is the time of untimely death if instead of being in pleasure you become confused for even a short time and that happens to be your final moment what will then be your final moment this is why you are taught the lesson of being ever ready Any second can be deceptive, and so you must consider yourself to be a special soul and create every thought, speak every word, and perform every act, while constantly staying in spiritual pleasure. Slogan: In order to become unshakable, finish anything wasteful or impure. Slogan: In order to become unshakable, finish anything wasteful or impure. Om Shanti